Okay, this is going to be um, a, a lecture on um, poster presentations. Um, if you were to take your research and um, do a poster presentation with it. Um, so what is a poster presentation? A poster presentation um, is a report um, or more of a demonstration of your research project. And so it's usually displayed on a large poster board um, that just has the major points of the study um, or the purpose so that it can easily be read and viewed by large groups of people. And so it's not a research paper cut and paste into a poster, um, but rather a unique format that's meant to draw people in and give them the very quick nitty gritty rundown of the research poster or research project. Um, and so they can walk away with the main, with the main points of it. Um, typically poster sessions um, are held at conferences and they're usually held in, in large amounts of time. And so um, I have presented at our AOTA national conference several times and, and usually it's about a two, two and a half hour block of time where um, the room is set up with a variety of posters um, and people can come to the posters and they can kind of view the ones that they find interesting. Um, they can kind of glean away any takeaway points from a large amount of posters um, to give them ideas or to help them um, understand a topic better. Um, it just sort of it just sort of depends um, on the purpose of your of your research. Um, it's usually formalized um, by people coming up to the researchers and saying, "Hey, tell me about your poster." Um, and then the researchers would have to kind of explain um, to the audience um, about their research, um, what they found, the purpose of their research, um, and answer any questions that they may have. Um, again, they're usually displayed in some kind of an exhibit hall. And then if anybody's interested in your poster, they may walk by. Um, some people like to have less formal um, where they may not approach you. Um, I tend to um, go up to people if I notice them making, making eye contact at my poster. I tend to approach them and say, hey, what questions can I ask? Or, or I mean, what, what questions can I answer for you? Or would you like to hear about my poster? Um, a lot of times people just, I think, appreciate um, the opportunity to do so because there is a lot of words on a small amount of paper and um, and I've had some really good feedback and really good conversations with people with similar interests as myself um, during a poster presentation. Um, so interested members can usually choose whether or not they want to study the content, um, maybe look at the implications, um, kind of at their own pace. Again, like I told you, I like to kind of approach people and say, hey, would you like to hear about it? Um, some people are like, no, I just would rather read it or that's okay. Or, um, you know, absolutely tell me about it in your own words. Um, or some people will kind of read it and they'll say, hey, I don't understand this. Why did you choose this test over the other test? Or um, it just kind of lends itself to some really nice conversations. Um, so we have the opportunity during a poster presentation to clarify, um, maybe explain the details of the study or justify. Um, and our observers' reactions or questions may be helpful in guiding future research, um, stimulating new ideas. Um, I know I sometimes get um, feedback from other people with similar interests as myself, and they're like, hey, why don't you contact me? I have some other information. And so it can end up being quite collaborative on a national basis also. It can be quite rewarding. Um, so the layout and content of your, of your um, poster um, you should have separate columns or sections. And so some of the different templates that you have, you'll kind of notice that at the very top, there's the title, um, perhaps the author names. Um, on the left column, there may be the purpose um, or the research question, perhaps your methods. 
Um, the middle section may be your results. Um, you may have a discussion and conclusions for implications um, on the right-hand column also. Of course, depending on your study, if it's quantitative, qualitative, mixed, um, some of these different results may look different or some of these different headings may look different. Um, some of these headings are um, based on um, your preceptor preference also. And so just kind of gain some, some ideas from perhaps some, some um, former student um, projects um, as well. So for the purpose of our research colloquium, we do have poster sessions. Um, and so we have OT students go to www.makesigns.com. Um, there they have a variety of um, posters that you could choose from. They have fabric posters, they have trifold posters. You guys are actually going to be making a scientific poster. Um, how we do that is at the top of the page, you can click a heading called Resources. You scroll down and you click on Partner School Templates. From Partner School Templates, you will scroll down even farther and choose the UMary logo. So there is a University of Mary has partnered with this company um, and has a variety of options for you to choose. Um, a specific um, format or poster that you find appealing. Um, it has our UMary colors on it. Um, it has our UMary logo on it. Um, that way when we do present at conference, um, if your poster is chosen, um, it's nice to display um, where these results are coming from. Um, I did create a Jing um, which walks you through the website on exactly where to click. Um, and how to order. Um, we will order 36 by 56 inch posters. Um, you can choose a glossy or a matte finish. And again, you'll want to rely on your preceptor preference for these. Um, in my Jing, I kind of display or kind of talk about the pros and cons of each. Um, and so everybody has their own um, preference. Um, your poster needs to be self-explanatory, and so the contents need to be included, um, typically using keywords and phrases. Um, you do not have to use complete sentences. Again, people will maybe look at your poster for three to five minutes um, and want to get the main takeaway points from the poster as far as what's the point of the poster, what did you do, what did you find, and what did those findings mean to practice, okay? So keep your statements short. Um, I like the use of bulleted lists instead of specific paragraphs. Um, use tables, graphs, um, perhaps any charts to illustrate important data or significant data. Um, and you can use color and shape um, to draw attention to your message also. Um, so, what I struggle with with posters and creating posters is they need to be visually um, attention getting, um, visually pleasing, not overwhelming with with words and punctuation. Um, again, they have to be very easy on the eyes um, and yet intriguing. And um, if somebody just is spending a couple minutes on your poster, can they get what they need to away from it? Um, so the tables, graphs, um, any photographs to summarize and illustrate important findings or a unique aspect of the study. Um, so some of my studies that I've supervised in the past have had a large amount of data, okay? Um, and so I chose not to have all of the data on my poster. Okay, I wanted just the main takeaway points, maybe the significant items, um, maybe a summary of code words, categories, themes, um, those sorts of things. And I, I really made it very simple to understand. So I had to kind of um, choose and pick the main points um, so the poster was less um, busy. Um, the most effective posters don't contain 
a ton of written material so that the observer gets lost, yet it should be complete enough so that they understand the study. Um, poster sizes can vary. Again, um, at UMary, we've chosen the 36 by 56 inch posters, um, taking into consideration the price, taking into consideration the audience and the size, um, and, and what's easier to view um, from what um, distance we have to work with. Um, and so in preparing your posters, the makesigns.com does a really nice job of pulling up. It's actually a PowerPoint slide that they have formatted. And so that would be a scaled down version of your particular poster. Okay, and so this allows you to arrange the poster, to arrange the text, the graphs, any photos, um, any of those kinds of things. Um, it allows you then to send that PowerPoint slide to your faculty preceptor or your um, research preceptor for that matter and get their scale of approval. Okay, now I like to get a printout of, of the poster um, and I like to scan it. I like to look for symmetry. I like to look for bullet points. And is it clear? Um, I like to um, look for um, grammar and spacing and all of those kinds of things that, that may stick out like a sore thumb if there's um, something, a, a mistake or an error on there. Um, originally, the eye naturally follows left to right um, down each column. Okay, and there's usually about three columns on, um, on a poster. I have seen four. Um, so ordinarily, you want to leave a reasonable amount of space um, between each column also. Okay, so again, less is better. Um, you don't want to be too busy. You want the, the words to be large, um, to be a summary. Um, yet complete enough so that somebody can understand. So some things to make your, your um, poster aesthetically pleasing. Um, you may want to choose colors, backgrounds with input from your preceptor. Now on makesigns.com, they do have um, specific colors and backgrounds that, that our, us as research preceptors have um, approved upon. And just notice that some of the backgrounds, if they're darker, like with blue or orange, um, they may require a white print. Um, and the lighter backgrounds, um, like your light blue, light orange, um, maybe your whites, um, those should require black or some kind of really dark print, just to get a little more color contrasting, making it easier for the reader to read. Um, you should use the same font throughout each area. Um, I've had some students who choose a different font for the title to make it bigger and, and wider. Um, and that's okay um, to have the title be a different font, but make sure that the font is simple and easy to read. Um, now with the many UMary templates that are provided for you, all of them do have University of Mary um, somewhere on the poster. Um, and so that's really good. Like I mentioned earlier, um, if any of these get presented at our national conference, it's nice um, to display where that research has been coming from. Um, it's, it's, I can speak for myself um, when I present at our national conference and people say, hey, you Mary, I noticed another one from you Mary. You guys are doing great job. You guys are doing great work. Um, so it can be very, very rewarding um, to get our name out there. Um, text, prepare your text ahead of time. And so sometimes we don't catch the, the spell checks, um, those kinds of things on the um, PowerPoint slide itself. Um, and so feel free to use a Word document, um, carefully check it for typos and clarity, um, try doing some copying and pasting, um, if you will, and, and see if that helps. Um, if you decide that you want to add a photo, um, the photo is going to have to be saved um, as a JPEG file. And so you'll want to use as high quality resolution and megapixels as possible. Um, sometimes if you put a, a photo on there um, on the PowerPoint slide and it's small, then when they go to blow it up um, to 36 by 56, 
Um, it becomes pixelated, it becomes fuzzy, um, looks low quality on that larger poster size. Um, so those are some tips on how to create a poster for a poster presentation. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, hopefully you take, a take time to look at my um, tutorial on makesigns.com and, and have fun with this. This is a time when you get to condense all your hard work and you get to make something very aesthetically pleasing um, and it can be very rewarding. So um, enjoy your time and if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Thank you.